Shabnam, where do you stand on the question of should we recognise that politicians and leaders no longer really make much difference to policy? Thank you, Manveen. Uh, we've had two panellists talk about the impact of democracy here in the UK, and, but I want to cover it in a bit of an international framework because I want us to understand what democracy means when you come from potentially you know, a third world country, a country that doesn't uh, have a democratic process or system. My family came from Afghanistan 24 years ago, and I would uh, hope that you, most of you would agree that Afghanistan is one of the most um, impoverished, uh, anarchic sort of countries in the world. And 20 years of time, effort, money, lives were put in, in Afghanistan to build a democratic system, a system that people sacrifice, sacrifice their lives for. Um, I, why my family came to the UK? Because it's, it's a, a country where someone like me who came to the UK with no understanding in the English language um, can now have an active role in politics because my voice mattered. Um, uh, m me as a woman, as someone from a refugee background, I originally thought, you know, five years ago, you know, what, what, I'm not from a white background, I'm not from a privileged background, what does politics or the political system have anything to do with me? And it was actually our politicians and our government uh, and our British citizens that convinced me that ac actually you do matter and what you say and your view and your life experiences matters. And I think sometimes we fail to understand or even be grateful for what we have here in the UK. We need to, cons of course, democracy is in trouble globally, but it's even more so why, why we should be looking to preserve it, to look after it and to make sure that citizens play a huge role in how the country is governed, in how we introduce policies that reflect the everyday uh, lives of, of, of the population. I also work in the civil service, so I've also seen how distant the civil service can be uh, from understanding the everyday struggles that people face. Um, it is in some ways over, sort of overly bureaucratic, uh, very slow, um, and a lot of people who work in the civil service have barely had any contact with communities, with disadvantaged, struggling communities all across the UK. And it's why some of the policies aren't reflective uh, or understand the needs, uh, you know, of what we need to be, uh, the impact that we need to be making. So it's not perfect. There are many things that we should be doing uh, to preserve it, to better it, to reform it. But the current system we, that we have in the UK, the political system, the democracy, and the, the institutions that we've, that we've developed here um, took hundreds of years. And it's something that I'm proud of. And it's why I'm proud to be British. Thanks, Shabnam. So st starting with everybody's pictures, I think we get a sense that clearly Everyone on the panel, in one way or another, agrees that politicians do matter. They are still shaping policy in some respect. But I wanted to move us on to the question of, is the idea that we have a working democracy, one that really functions properly in the West, actually an illusion? Um, Aaron, do you want to kick off on that? Mm, such a, it's a big question, isn't it? And they all are. <laughs> see it, uh, how the light gets in. Do we have a functioning democracy? I, I, think, I think in Britain... I think it's somewhat different to say the European Union. My view is, and I'm sure there's some disagreement here, I think that we have the worst of all worlds with our political system. We have a two-party system like the US, but without party primaries. Uh, and I think what that does, is it means you foreclose new ideas, new individuals from addressing challenges and problems. And that's what happens. You know, New challenges emerge over time, over the next 100 years. We've got the housing crisis. We've got the climate crisis. We've got inequality. And we aren't producing capable politicians who can address that because of real shortcomings in how our two-party system works in this country. And it is a problem. And I personally think it will, it will actually get worse until we get proportional representation. I'm not a lib. You know, I'm a Marxist. I'm a socialist. I'm not meant to care about little things like constitutional reform. But it seems really obvious to me that we have a basic failure of solving problems in this country when it comes to our political class. They're pundits. I think there's more and more. I see politicians or West Street or somebody from the Conservative Party, they go on TV and they, they have an opinion like any of us. They're a pundit. 
That's not what politicians are meant to do. Politicians are meant to generate answers and solutions to problems, and at the same time, it's a difficult task to represent their constituents in civil society. I, I don't think they're doing that. And I think many criticisms of Westminster, the bubble, the elite in London, I think really it's not they're culturally distinct to what we want as politicians, it's partly that. But also, by virtue of that electoral system, we're always going to get the wrong people. And just, just remind us how the primary system would, would, would change that. Yeah, so I think... So the US has first past the post, like in, in this country. So when you vote in, uh, in an election, you're voting for a representative from a certain constituency. Now, what we have with politicians in this country is you have a constituency MP, uh, but they can have effectively a job for life if they're in a safe seat. Whereas in the United States, a senator can be primaried by another registered Democrat or Republican, and if they're more favored, then they then become the candidate in the, in the election. Now, Labour, <coughs> ahead of 2019, Labour MPs were terrified about mandatory selection. This is awful. Even though the Greens have it, although they've only got one MP in their defense. <coughs> the Lib Dems have it, and the SNP have it. But this idea that oh, mandatory selection is so alien, it's so radical, it's so left-wing, they've got it in the United States. And that, to me, spoke to the real atrophied nature of, of, of the debate in this country about democracy and how comfortable and cosy the politicians and the media is in London. And I think this is a basic demand of saying we don't want politicians for life in a constituency for 30, 35 years, insulated from people, as long as they're on side with the internal party hierarchy. That's not acceptable, but that's precisely the kinds of politicians we're producing. Calvin, do you recognise those problems? So I don't disagree. Um, I, I look at it from a similar perspective. I think the problem is that we're taking on board American politics. I think we're looking at our own politicians as if they're presidential figures. Like, did you vote for Boris Johnson or did you avoid voting for Corbyn? And actually, we should be voting for local representatives, people who will represent us in the Houses of Parliament. So we should preferably be voting based on policies rather than personalities. But it is very, very personality driven at the moment. And that is why we're falling into some of the traps that Aaron was just talking about. I think perform, uh, PR could potentially help with that. It could uh, narrow, uh, take us away from the two-party system that doesn't really help people on the ground. Uh, and I know it's controversial for a conservative to say that, but it could, could be a potential win for the people. And Shabnam, you know, you, you brought a perspective of, of looking in at our democracy from abroad. Um, I mean, do you think we should be closer to the American system? Are there things that you would want to fix? Look, I think... Um... As I mentioned earlier, I'm not saying that our democracy is perfect. Um, and I think potentially it may be also that our conventional interpretation of what uh, a democratic system means uh, may also be slightly, I guess, problematic or distorted. Um, I mean, there are some radical <laughs> proposals there around how we have an open democracy where public participation plays a bigger role. Um, I think France um, did, uh, there was a concept that was, uh, had already started uh, in France where I think uh, about 150 citizens were tasks, tasked with uh, creating a policy around climate change. I think Canada had also adopted, this, uh, adopted a similar approach of um, tasking about 100 uh, Canadian citizens to look at uh, tech, uh, big tech. Um, and I think I mentioned slightly the civil service and the fact that uh, the system is so disconnected in some ways uh, with the general public. And it's why potentially there are people who are disillusioned with the political process and with democracy, that we need to bring people, uh, bring the system to people rather than the, the people to the system. Um, it needs to be a lot more closely connected. Um, and, and there are many ways where we, it can be reformed. It can, it can uh, include uh, uh, public participation uh, and encourage people to come forward with ideas, uh, with new solutions. I think also in some ways relying uh, yes, you know, the political process is such where we, every four years or so, we vote for a candidate or a political party and we expect them to to come up with ideas of how to solve uh, issues in a local constituency or, or national problems. But there needs to be a way where we're not simply relying on that member of parliament or the, the, the person who holds office to come up with solutions, but a way where people can come to them uh, with uh, what they want their community and their local area to look like. Um, and, and that's where the problem is. It's that we expect politicians to come up with solutions, whereas actually politicians and the government should be coming to communities uh, and public participation should play a, a bigger role. If I can comment on that, yeah. uh, just, just because I, I tend to disagree with that. I think.
To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.